Hey Hobby Halloween fans, welcome back to the channel. Today we're at the Electronics Workbench for an introduction to working with LEDs. In this video I will demonstrate how to properly light them up for use in your haunts and or props. And later in this video I will assemble and evaluate this kit donated to the channel from Jekyll Labs. More on that later. Light emitting diodes, commonly referred to as LEDs, are kind of like a tiny light bulb with two key differences. First, they produce light by the amount of current, not voltage, that flow through them. And secondly, they have a polarity, meaning that they will only light up when the power is applied to them in the correct direction. By far, pre-wired LEDs are the easiest to use in your projects. They take all the work out of making them because you do not need to solder the LEDs, select the proper resistor, and put the heat shrink tubing on them. They just light when power is applied in the correct direction. When you purchase your pre-wired LEDs, you must be careful to select the voltage that you will be connecting them to. You can purchase them to work at 3, 5, 6, 9, and 12 volts. And you can purchase them in different sizes. 3 millimeters, 5 millimeters, 10 millimeters, and in a variety of colors and effects. For the most part, this is an easy go-to way to make use of LEDs in your Halloween projects. If you look closely at the assembly, the heat shrink tubing is covering up a resistor. The resistor is a very important component that is necessary to limit the current so that the power applied to the LED will not overheat or burn it out. Sometimes we can't find pre-wired LEDs that have the style, effect, working voltage, or maybe we want to customize them for our own needs. In that case, we must purchase them as separate LEDs and DIY them ourselves. The best thing to have in your collection of electronic tools is an LED tester. They are very inexpensive and they are very useful. These testers make it easy to experiment with LEDs. Just plug the legs of the LEDs into the socket and press the test button. If it doesn't light up, reverse the leads. This could save you time if the LED you have isn't working. Notice there are numbers printed on the tester. These are the different currents that will be supplied to the LED under test. Remember that the LED brightness is based upon how much current is running through them. This is one way to determine how much current is required to get the desired brightness. A few words about power supplies. There are two quantities of importance when talking about power supplies, volts and amps. Power is measured by the multiplication of these two quantities, and the product is expressed in watts. For example, a 12 volt 5 amp supply is a 60 watt power supply. 12 times 5 is 60. An ideal power supply will always deliver the full voltage, but the circuit attached to the supply will only draw as much current as it needs. For example, if I connect a device to this power supply that needs 12 volts and requires 1 amp to run, the device receives the full 12 volts and will only draw the 1 amp, regardless that the power supply is capable of 5 amps. The total load attached to the supply, when all added up, mustn't exceed 5 amps. In fact, I derate the power supply by 10% for a safety margin, so I wouldn't load this power supply much past 4.5 amps. You can always buy a bigger power supply or split the loads onto separate power supplies. Sometimes we run our haunt props on batteries. They are measured in volts and amp hours. Amp hours tell us the total capacity of the battery. For example, if I had a D-cell battery capable of 10 amp hours and I connect a 1.5 device that draws 1 amp, then I should expect 10 hours of runtime. If my device uses half of that, 0.5 amps, then it would run for 20 hours. And if it takes double that, 2 amps, then only 5 hours of runtime, and so on. LEDs have a nominal voltage required to light them up. This is known as the forward voltage drop. This voltage drop is slightly different for every color. Notice as the wave legs get shorter, the higher the voltage needed to light them. For the purpose of selecting a current limiting resistor, I will round the forward voltage drop. 2 volts for colors red, orange, and yellow, and 3 volts for green, blue, UV, and white. These aren't great approximations, but they will get us close to where we need to be. This is the electronics formula for computing the limiting resistor. Resistor equals voltage of the supply minus the voltage of the forward drop of the LED divided by current. 
However, there's an easier way. I will show you the shortcut by working an example. I have a 12 volt power supply and I want to light a red LED. Red LEDs have a voltage drop of 2 volts. Take 12 and subtract 2. This gives us 10. Now multiply it by 100. The fastest way to do that is to tack on two zeros after the 10. The number we get is 1000, that is 1000 ohms, which is often said 1K ohm. A 1K ohm resistor will limit the current to 10 milliamps. That's about the middle of the brightness range. To make the LED brighter, if I reduce the resistance, it will make it easier for more current to pass through the LED. If I take the 1000 ohms and divide it by 2, I'll get 500. 500 ohms will pass 20 milliamps. And it is important to note that 20 milliamps is considered the typical current for continuous use for most of the LEDs of the types that we're using. Of course, there are exceptions, so consult the data sheet so that you be aware not to drive the LEDs too hard. Otherwise, you will shorten their lives. And to make an LED dimmer, I must increase the resistance so less current will pass through the LED. I can double the value from 1K to 2K and only 5 milliamps will flow through the LED. I'm sure some of you have already begun typing in the comments section to let me know that a 500 ohm resistor doesn't exist because it's not a standard E24 series value. Yes, I was just getting to that. Here is the table of standard resistors. If you examine the table, you will see that not all resistor values are manufactured. We have 100, 200, even 300, but not 400 or 500, etc. You might think that these resistor values appear to skip around randomly. Well, there's a deeper reason for this and it has to do with the logarithmic formula. And the E24 series has 24 values in each decade, hence the 24 in its name. But I digress. The closest standard resistor to 500 ohms is a 510 ohm resistor. The second choice might be a 560. If you don't have or can't find those resistors, it's safe to increase the resistance to the next value. It will just mean that the LED will be dimmer. Another trick to make 500 ohms is to parallel two 1K ohm resistors. But this is getting too deep into electronics for this video. However, if you're interested in more in-depth electronic videos, please let me know down in the comments section. Over the years, I've developed shortcuts for selecting the current limiting resistor. Since I work with the same voltages when making my props, these are my go-to values for dropper resistors. I used to use different power supplies in my haunt, and I had to be careful not to plug 12 volts into a prop that was expecting 5 volts. So I decided to use 12 volts as my standard prop voltage. This saves a lot of time and reduces potential mistakes when setting up props in my haunt. For the dropping resistor, I will start with a 1K resistor for all my LEDs, and that usually is perfect but every LED and situation will be slightly different. So sometimes I empirically try different resistors in the circuit and adjust it until I get what I'm looking for. Here are five LEDs, each powered by 12 volts, but with different resistors to show the range of different brightnesses levels that can be achieved. Sometimes we don't know the level of brightness needed to set the mood lighting in a scene, and we need to adjust the brightness on the fly. For this, we would use a potentiometer, commonly referred to as a pot. A pot gives us variable resistance. I will also use a transistor in this circuit. The name transistor is a contraction of trans resistance, referring to the device's ability to transfer resistance. A transistor passes more current through the collector to emitter than through its base to the emitter. This is a basic function of an amplifier. Thus, I can connect more LEDs to be powered through them. Here is the circuit. Here I have breadboarded the circuit and I will connect some LED spotlights to it and demonstrate it working. Here is my DIY six channel dimmer box that I've used in the past to set up a graveyard scene. In this scene I had various spotlights pointing at tombstones and my Grim Reaper prop. The dimmer box was an easy way to adjust the mood lighting in that scene. Here's the schematic for the dimmer box. It's basically the same circuit repeated six times, once for each channel. But what if I replace the potentiometer with a flickering LED? The flicker LED's current varies with its random pattern of its flicker. A transistor would transfer that to the output where all my spotlights are connected. I guess you could say, 
one LED to control them all. The way the circuit is working is that the transistor is amplifying the changing current created by the flicker LED. And here we can see that the spotlights are following the pattern of the flickering LED which is attached to the transistor's input. It turns out that there's a very similar product already available for home DIY haunters that you might be interested to know about. One of my subscribers, after seeing the video where I made a fully adjustable LED flicker controller for Van Oaks props, reached out to me to let me know about a kit that he offers to amplify a flickering LED in much the same way that I just demonstrated, except his uses a MOSFET transistor. The kit comes with a PC board and parts and requires a minimal amount of soldering to put it together. So you don't necessarily have to have one of these, but it's called a lead former. And what you do is you put your resistor in and then you bend the leads over like that and just makes them a little bit nicer. Put the leads through the holes and then I just bend the leads out gently. If I have helping hands I can just hold the circuit board like this. Okay. Now let's get the LED. This side's marked plus there's a flat side right there on the LED. The long leg is plus, and there's a flat side there, so those two things need to line up. I think I'll leave a little bit of space. Now these require me to not dwell too long because it's an LED. It's a semiconductor device. This is a 30N06. We'll put that like that because this is showing the heat sink on the silk screen, and that is pin one. So I'm just going to bend those two legs back. Reach underneath the board. I'm going to just support that. Once you get the first one and you feel it's level, you can go ahead and solder the next. Inspect it before I trim the leads. It looks good. Here I'm going to put my thumb over there and I'm going to cut flush to the board. I'm putting my thumb here. I'm, I'm taking the, the flush cutters with the flush side towards the circuit board and I'm going right up there. And by, if I didn't do that, this thing is going to fly off. It'll fling off like spring loaded. By doing that, I control where that offcut goes. In his video, he put wires. I'm going to use, um, there was intentions for these kind of connectors. I just happen to have a couple of them. So this is the entry ports for the wiring. So obviously this sticks out. Again, I'm going to put the ports of the connector out, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to get one side, and then I'm going to make sure it's straight before I finish it. Okay, that's the kit finished. I'm wiring up the plug for my power supply and uh, it's just now I have the power supply on let's plug this in and we get basically get a flickering LED so far so good
mash plus and minus together at the same time. And I'm going to try to get them in there. Okay. So now I'll be able to plug in some uh, test lights. Now I only have one channel, so let's just connect one up right now. Let's plug that in. Okay, so that's now running. And I'll plug my light in. And you can see that that's flickering as well. I'm going to take the output of this. And I'm going to plug the output of the flicker thing. And then I can plug in up to four or five of these LED lights. So. Again, all of these are, are, are blinking at the same time. Ward Myers is the developer at Jekyll Labs that makes this kit along with several other haunt related kits. You can check out his kits and props that he makes over on his YouTube channel. He also has a website www.jekyll-labs.com and his email is doc at jekyll-labs.com. All this information I'll put in the show notes below. I realize that I left out a lot of electronic details for the sake of brevity. So please comment down in the comment section if you have any questions about this. Also let me know if you would like to have more in-depth technical videos like this, or if there are topics that you're interested in. Well, that's all I have for now. I'm going to go back in the workshop and resume working on the lunging skelly prop. That video is coming up next. So please make sure that you're subscribed. Subscriptions on YouTube are completely free. And turn on the notification bell so you know when my next video comes out. Thanks for watching.